Hello, welcome to the Purple Rock Podcast. I am your host, Matt. With me once again is Emma. And joining us this week, our special guest star and uh, original host, brought back out of retirement, Andy. Uh, Much like the people on this season, I just keep coming back. (laughs) It's my turn to talk. Hi. (laughs) Right. Andy is the Candace of the podcast. That is something that we have said (laughs) many times. Billy's love me. <laughs> Always stepping out to team up with the fellow whites. I mean, look at the makeup of this podcast. Well, you know, discussing this particular diverse season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there. Look, it's not our fault that Brad refuses to participate. Refuses. Interesting way to spin that one. Um, <laughs> Well, we're not going to start with Brad. Uh, let's talk about... You I know, meant our tra- Brad, not their Brad. <laughs> it's, a, it's called a transition. It's <laughs> wordplay. I get to, you know, play around with these things. Um, <laughs> no, I want to talk about how uh, the tribes come back from tribal council. And Nate is with the other tribe. And, they, and someone seems to have just zero worries about talking all trash about their own tribe in front of him. Great decision, right, guys? I mean, yeah, like, to be fair, that's how I am. If, well, or at least how it would be if we were ever around other people. Like, we, you know, frankly, this podcast, you know, I will spill all the tea. I'm a 43 year old man, and I just said that. <laughs> no, yeah, I'll, I'll take Andy the blame for that off. one from writing the outline. But um, yeah, I mean, I like it makes sense because she's because well, we didn't say it but it's like oh uh, or jessica they call her jessica way more often than i remembered her being yeah. called like that victim does not actually fully catch on which is interesting um in the way that like cowboy is not his actual name and well, i don't know if just, they've ever known his real name i don't think anybody was like, what he is, just no, like i refuse to call you that yeah, right. he just uh, went out there and was like, nope, I'm doing this and I'm spelling it this way so you'll all think it's my name, but it's not. Um, and yeah, but like, you know, she was the only one left out of the boat. She was not happy that a cowboy went home. So, you know, it makes sense that she's gonna gonna be antsy and stuff. But uh, I think less so in that it's a bad move for the tribe, which it certainly is. It's a bad move for individually because it's, really highlights her not being one with the tribe. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, and again, this is editing, but it certainly seems this week that the rest of the tribe might be open to someone jumping Penner's position in it. Um, and it, you know, people just kind of keep moving and moving in front of him, making sure that he's still in good with the rest of that, you know, core five alliance and, uh, I think this is kind of the moment that kind of did her in just right at the beginning to show that, yeah, we can't actually rely on her. We can't really work with her. If it wasn't this, it would be something else. You can't it rely on her. There, you know, yeah. This is just evidence. It's not, uh, I don't know if it's the cause. It's, you know, <gasps> she is not somebody who these people would ever be comfortable playing with. And it, yeah. you know, if, if again, if Nate hadn't been there, then she would have done something else. She would have just said something. It was like, to, but really, yes, I, I get it. I get we don't trust Jonathan. But do you really want to play with Flicka? Yeah. And the answer would be no. The one funny thing is like Nate is all uh, I'm getting all this information, all this good intel. It's like that intel has an expiry date, dude. You learned <laughs> nothing. Oh, yep. so you learned that everybody's going to vote out. Like it was like a sneak preview of the vote. Like it should, there mm-hmm. was no in- intel really from that moment. Yeah. Well, but you know, it's actually, it's interesting because I think he thought, and I think pretty much everyone in these two episodes thought merge is coming, merge is coming. It's going to happen any day now. And I, you know, they all seem to be maybe not continually surprised by the fact it hasn't, but they're making plans as if it's right there. And that's, that's like the big theme of these two episodes. Yeah, because you certainly, like, while, while Flicka wasn't able to move in front of Jonathan, what's interesting is it sounds like she was initially ahead of Ozzy. And yeah. Ozzy, you know, had proven just too valuable, but also that was part of the problem. Um, and, you know, they were deciding, like, when when the merge may or may not be. Um, right, in because... some ways, that ultimately was a good decision for them. In some ways, it was ba- a bad decision. It kind of... Right. Too early, and maybe it's because, you know, we know this season. Right. But, like, and I think maybe what it is, is this is a 20-person season. 
Um, there and been there's one only had been one other up until this point, or was no? I think Panama this was the first. No, Panama was twenty. Okay, and then Adam. And, oh, uh, All Stars was actually just eighteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So it's yeah, still, it's so maybe new. it's like it feels like there's been enough votes for a merge, but there's like a lot of people still. Yeah. Yeah, I think there. I think that is. Panama you know, sixteen. Yeah, 16. 16. So there we go. This really? is the first time. Oh, I guess since they season. started with four tribes. Then, yeah, it was you know. it was four or fours. Yeah, no, I was pretty sure. No, this was the first 20 person season, which changed a lot of the math there. Yeah, um, sure. Because like even after she goes, there's still 12 people, which I guess when she's there, I could say there's 13. Um, I guess I technically right Palau, now, but I guess technically Palau, good. but like that doesn't really count. Yeah, that doesn't really they count. Weren't, with they weren't really deal. there. Um, but yeah, no, and and so that kind of like, you know, but everyone's kind of expecting it, I think, for that reason. And I think they knew that the flick of vote, you know, like that, you know, it, the merge was not going to come before that one, but it might, but that might have been the last one. And of course, thinking about the merge is also kind of the theme of the second episode, you know, well, not the theme of the second episode, but does lead to the downfall of show Brad, not podcast Brad. <laughs> Maybe also podcast Brad? Probably no. not. Well, he was no. probably still in diapers when this uh, aired, so I don't know if it had a big effect on him. He was yeah, like, like, furious because he was like 10 years old. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, so accurate, right? Yeah. <laughs> I told you that in private. <laughs> um, man, I hope he's not listening. <laughs> I don't guarantee you. There's no way. Actually, I hope he is. Uh, no, but okay, so show Brad. Everyone is... message Brad on Twitter. <laughs> So, but no, but thinking ahead to the merge is what get is what starts to get him in trouble in this episode too, because he starts talking about the game after the merge and saying stuff that, well, one, you probably don't want to say after the merge, but you definitely don't want to say before the merge. Yeah, Rare was really locked in on if you say one phrase that they're suspicious of, they're just like, that's it. They she wants mashed potatoes. He says it's every man for himself. They gotta get out of here. Yeah, it's possible there's not a huge brain trust on that tribe. Uh, like it's, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm stepping out on a ledge, but like, just kind of look at the people there. Yeah. You think Is there, like, we know poverty becomes very smart, uh, but right now, like, it, the, the mastermind might be Nate. Like, I... I, 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 no, I think the problem is the mastermind is Nate, but the one calling the shots is Adam. And no one wants that. And kind of even bad. though you know the men did not have a majority and then they lost one, but it, like it still circles there because like it just seems like a big frat there. And it's yep. not just um related to you know the people who end up seeming the frattiest, but like like Jenny is out there making the same jokes. She seems yeah. you know high-fiving them and the whole deal. <laughs> Rebecca is there. Um, but yeah, like <laughs> So it's just to the point where like he says one thing and then it's like all over for him. It's like, yeah, I, I don't know if they have any other governing strategy. Like, I don't know yeah. where the, the vote would have been going had Brad not either done that or you know refused to swim that one time. Yeah, because we are skipping ahead a little bit because it's really what you what you start seeing um, is like the their issues they start to have with Brad is because right. he's creative spatial, which mm, is right. a real term i'm sure um it actually might be i'm very much not creative spatial whatever that is so i would not spatially know. it would just be the way of saying yeah it. i think so and that the words i can do the spatial intelligence is awful um <laughs> just, just so bad <laughs> but um yeah he he you know insists on the puzzle because he thinks he's more valuable there the yeah. problem is they don't even get to the puzzle because of the swimming yeah, because they send Rebecca out to swim and she's not able to compete with the people in the other tribe. Because Nate is stuck sitting out because he had been kidnapped, which I think right. also kind of shows a little bit of why they kidnapped him. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 100% the reason. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. And, and yeah, and and then had him in part, like, not only can Rebecca not do, fine. do it the first, right, well, yeah, it's like, not only can Rebecca not get it done the first time, but because of that, she can't do it the rest of the time. And right. it's like a multi-leg thing. It's not like they yeah, each go, go one. Times. So Adam and Parvati then have to do this challenge as two people while the well i2 is doing it as three so even if you're good like it's tiring that's yeah. a very and, physically demanding challenge and then of course if you actually looked at the puzzle 
that's like the easiest goddamn puzzle survivor will ever give you. It was six pieces. Uh, I would say the very next puzzle was actually even easier, which is take the letters to spell the only mutiny anybody has ever heard of, (laughs) unless you study these things. It's like, most famous bounty is like, bounty? Wait, that's actually a real thing and not just the title of a movie. Honestly, Uh, I've not even heard of that, but I will counter all of you and say the easiest puzzle was in uh, Blood versus Water, where they numbered one through one. One through, yeah, 50. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was, yes, that was stupid. Um, I forgot about that one. Like Point is, it was actually a very easy puzzle. It was just a map of the world in like six pieces. So it's not even like a lot of pieces. It was like one, two, three, four, five, six, done. Yeah. And it's not one of those like sneaky where it's like small amount of pieces, but it's really hard. Like it's just right because yeah. those exist. Those they didn't even like mess around, like put it North America in the middle because you know we actually no. live on a globe and not a map. That was, it was pretty simple. <laughs> right. That said, yeah, no, uh, this, this yeah, was Mercator projection Matt, all the way there. Um. <laughs> uh, Brad takes the hit there, but like they were gonna lose anyway. Like it, it, you know, I, I get Adam. Yeah, when and, you got you know, uh, Ozzy in the water. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. yeah. They had yeah. to compete against Ozzy. I don't care if it's Brad or Rebecca. That's just optics. But yes. you know, Ozzy was going to beat them. It was in the water. Game over. You had to yeah. race against Aquaman. But but the point is, but it's the part it's the process, right? It's Brad thinking that he knows better than everyone else and being wrong about what he knows. You know, like we don't wrong. know if he was wrong. They haven't done puzzles either, you know, like they could have maybe they would have lost on them. Because my point you know, earlier is th- this is a very stupid tribe. This is a very stupid track. Um, smart. <laughs> but yeah, so that you're right. That is actually the beginning of Brad's downfall. I've actually kind of forgotten a bit of the first episode because who cares about that? Because it's not that, an interesting episode. No, it's a good thing we doubled up because after that, it's pretty much just like, you know, okay, so like, is it actually going to be Flicka? Or, you know, where's all this, you know, fake, you know, the uh, shade about it. Jonathan going to actually yeah. happen? And of course it's not. But second episode, shit gets exciting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we also get Nate's, uh, the beginning of his heel turn in this. Yes. Uh, like I, last week, because I, I listen to the podcast, big fan. Uh, you guys were, you, uh, Matt was mentioning that, uh, you know, you're like, hey, I couldn't remember why, I, like, I actually like Nate. He seems pretty fun and all that. And like, and I was listening, it's like, there's going to be a reason why you're going to, you're going to remember the later part. And it starts here when, yep. you know, he calls Brad a Nancy boy. Which maybe is just uh, about, you know, that him not competing in the masculine way, which is also uh, shitty. But, you know, there's an extra element here, too, that I'm not going to deny, which also could, you know, ultimately maybe be the result of his whole downfall of why, you know, he feels like, uh, like when he's voted out, he doesn't seem that upset about it. Like, no. I don't think he was really had a good place there. No. Uh, who knows yeah, why? If you think of you know who the the two men they did choose to vote out, you know that's you know they got that's something a, to come. Not a great, great. Look. not a great, not a great, not a great look. Yeah, and then the week prior, Brad votes for like his original tribe mate. Like he voted for Jenny, mm-hmm. so like. But I they're so actually... afraid he's going to go back to Becky and Yule, even though he had an opportunity to go to Becky and Yule. And yeah. explicitly did not choose. Yeah. Well, and to Nate's credit, he does bring that up. He but... does, but then they do yeah. it anyway. But we'll get there when we get there. Yeah. No, I mean, no, and you're right. Like, that's the moment when it's like, oh, Nate, no, what? No, yeah. no. And I'll say, like, I don't think he'll do that again because to whom? But um, <laughs> this is not the last time that yeah. Nate uh, will say shitty things in his timeline this season. So well, there's a reason you don't remember liking him is because he's an asshole. But you know, absolutely I, I found you know I didn't find him to be that yeah. until the start the start of these episodes. No, I no, I, I agree with that. And I think before these episodes he had been kind of like providing, you know, like he was kind of like fun. He's more and he wasn't, right. And he wasn't Adam, which was like the key part there. Does a lot. Um, right. Um <laughs> Big which is really a big one to clear i'm just saying i'm just saying that is a bar to clear and he's doing it which gives him some credit over there i actually have a hot take adam. about adam i don't know when i should share it but um i think he's a big ingredient to the success of this season yes because oh, because he sucks so much yes exactly 100 <laughs> oh, oh, i think yeah. this season oh, yeah, no, is yeah, so no, much no, better because of adam and, and for a specific reason that we'll talk about throughout the season perhaps this episode yeah yeah, yeah. um that's that's yeah. fine 
no, no, no. <laughs> I, I know because I want to come back to Adam, but when we get to the second episode, you know, who uh, else wanted to come back to Adam? The yeah, oh yeah. my god, that was a perfect. That's Forget right. Everything. We have to go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're moving on. We're moving on. <laughs> uh, Candace comes back to Adam. I mean, you know, we could even talk about Candace before the actual mutiny happens because, man, are eyes they at him? sprinkling that foreshadowing all it over the place. It is everywhere. So, like, I mean, we really, st- I feel like we really start noticing it when they're eating food and the camera will not stop focusing on the two, like, the two of them, and especially Candace, like, telling him, like, mouthing to him, like, I love you, I miss you, like, all that crap. Like, I do think yeah. some of that was ta- like taunting, like playful taunting amongst you know people that are into each other. But I think part of it's like, oh, I'm so sorry you're not getting this. Yeah, mm-hmm, 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 I love you. Oh, it's disgusting. It was ugh. It's disgusting either way, but I do think that was part of what she was doing. <laughs> yes, yeah. it was also from last week. <laughs> right. No, but I'm saying that's where it started. I'm yeah. saying that's where it started. Um, right, where we're seeing like, oh, she's not over this. No, and then this week, you know, she's talking about wanting to go back to those two Adam yeah like they're Harvey. having this whole talk about like you know oh hey it's you know it's five of us like we have we'll have an advantage of like six you know six to five like best case scenario we'll we get rid of a couple of them then we can get rid of Bozzy when we have a chance we have a strong five like good to go and then Candace goes to you know Jonathan later and it's like but I want to be with Adam and Parvati <laughs> And then Jonathan is like, oh, okay, like just kind of rolls with it. I don't know what his actual plan is, but like rolls with it. It's like, okay, yeah. And like, and then says the unfortunate thing about getting the four Caucasians to the final four. And I'm like, I don't know. We like you. What are you doing? I mean, it, I guess he was lampshading it because that's what's going down here. Yep. Uh, and Candace can just let it go because she's just like, oh, sorry, homie, you're not going to be part of that group. Um, but yeah, and, and it's kind of like how we said, oh, there's only two episodes uh, of, you know, the really horrible concept. But no, it actually persists. It does crop back up. Quite a bit. And this is, again, reason why you can't do this. This is bad. where you can really, you can see the producers, like, dry heaving. And, yeah, you know, they're like, oh, the, yeah, I'm sure there's just so much. <laughs> what have we done? Point, <laughs> and it will only sobbing. get worse. And it's like, yeah, like, they be like couldn't you at least use the tribe name? I can't remember what, what they were. Maybe they I were I think Rero. the problem is they were Rarotonga. Yeah. Yeah. They they were can't, yeah. If it was um, Hiki or something, then they could refer to something of the past. Yeah. Yeah, but that that is I because I had that thought too, and I was like, well, not to defend, but I think the problem is like they were that that's that old tribe, so you can't be like the full railroad at <laughs> the end because. Of course, that didn't come original. up when he was like, oh, "We'll team up with the Asians." Uh, no, we, no, no. This is not the first time, time he's made this forward. mistake. Yeah, yeah. It's not the first time. Yeah, um, it's not great. Yeah, yeah so this is actually why, like, we've always been like, why do people not like Penner and all of that? And it's like, I think this is it. Well, because I remember, like, liking him, but not liking him. Like, oh, there's something maybe, and, you know, it's probably statements like that, where he's all like, you know, oh, we'll team up with the Asians, or, yeah, how about Caucasians? It's like, ah, because we don't know him at any point other than right. this guy on the show at that point. And like, eh, that's not cool. Also, the other yeah, thing is, everyone context. this season, everyone this season has been telling us pretty much up until this point, I don't trust Jonathan. I don't trust Jonathan. Yeah. Jonathan, you know, not trustworthy. Um, and I actually found that conversation between Candace and Jonathan to be really funny um, because, you know, you have like Penner basically saying like, this is the plan, you know, like, you know, saying like confessional, like this is the plan, this is the plan. And then Candace goes, I don't trust him. You know, this is what I want to do. And then she tells him that's what she wants to do. And he immediately changes his plans so that it aligns with hers to help hers out. And she's like, yeah, no, I don't know what he's doing. I don't trust that guy for a second. And you can see how hard he's working to like fit in with her, who he thinks is actually like his best partner. And it's just kind of hilarious how badly it's failing. And then in the second episode, after the mutiny, like that's when it really kind of gets funny, right? Oh, it's a little funny there, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, it's just, yeah, he repeatedly, like, even before the meeting, he talks about how, like, Candace is his number one, Candace is his ally, and blah, blah, which explains just why he goes, but, like, yes. on every turn, you have Candace being like, I don't care, like, 
you know, both before and after the mutiny, it's just like, yeah, he is just there. Like she seems to, it's almost like, I, I feel like she's like more loyal to Becky than to Jonathan. And like, I what does right. she have to do with Becky, no, you know? See, like I think nothing. you're totally right. Yeah. I mean, and, and the thing is, when he does mutiny and goes over, everyone's like, no one questions for a second why Candace mutinied. Everyone's like, of course she did. Like, you know, yeah, she'd rather be here. But right. even like, like Nate, like it's not like it's just yeah. like Adam and Parvati are like, oh, no, cool, no, she's no, coming back. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Nate is Nate never wonders why she mutinied. Jonathan, he's like, why the hell did he step off that map? What was he thinking? <laughs> Yeah, no, Jonathan's a snake rat for doing this. Candace, oh, yeah, she should have been here the whole time. Like, even Jenny, who I believe just meets her at that moment, like, hugs her when she gets to the drive. It's like, you know, I have to, you know, ingratiate myself to this elder member of the tribe or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Which brings into more of the dynamics that the show would rather us not think about. Um, yeah, no. So this isn't on here, but we're talking about the mutiny. Um the mutiny is one of the most interesting um, things to ever happen in the history of pre-merge Survivor. Yes. Why do people say that the pre-merge is dull of this season? This, I, like this episode is historic, it's exciting, and it sets into play a dynamic which you know, will power the entire season. And frankly, one of the best storylines the show has ever done. Is I it just because people too... overinvest in early characters? I think there's some of that of like, well, we don't know anything about Cecilia. And it's like, who cares? Who cares? Um, who, cares? who cares? And I think I think it's, you know, you know, you know all you need to know when she keeps calling Ozzy Oscar. That's First Christina, of all, that's Christina. <laughs> wow. Damn it. Damn it. To the point, Damn I suppose. Damn it. Those people would tell you. you know. I'm right. canceled. I'm out. Um, Do the terrible. rest without me. Anyway, um, to be fair, Cecilia does call him Oscar once, but only when talking to Christina. Um, but yeah, like I, I think there's, you know, some people just have that viewpoint. I think, I think for a lot of people, they kind of, I think, mentally think of the mutiny as like being the merge, even though it's not. But it's just like that's where the excitement happens, and like think there. And one of our commenters pointed this out, I, uh, unfortunately, it was a couple of weeks ago, so I don't remember who it was, but it's, you know, it's really not the whole post-merge that is a slog, because the first couple episodes are fun. It's really just kind of like the three through eight, which sounds like a lot, but seven isn't a real episode. Um, but like, there are some of those votes are just not that interesting you know the flick of but then again the cowboy one is yeah we have it's just like voodoo one of the yeah, most influential moments in the history of the show there's okay and he agreed with us i'm glad I'm, I'm glad we got that on record there's um, three votes that aren't interesting and like i don't know people just like i think there's just an expectation of everything to yeah. be exciting and it's just not and like if you're gonna have boring votes that's where you want the boring votes to be yeah exactly like th there's almost no scene in survivor where every vote is interesting even heroes versus villains which most people consider or at least until maybe the most recent season considered to be the best season had some boring votes they're called sugar and randy um <laughs> So like it's just it just happens. Micronesia like had like not three votes. You know, there was like right. three people that are more that just left. And that apparently is one of the greatest seasons of all time. No, I mean, we just did Pearl Islands. How many of the pre-merge votes were super impactful? Some, but yeah. also not some. It's why we're not doing one episode a week. So I I don't know. And maybe those people I, I think it's true. I'm not gonna, you know, deny that a lot of the pre-merge people are fairly anonymous, especially as time has passed. But I think it's because the people that are really good in this season are really good, yeah. you know? So there's not a, as much middle, right? You know, no, so there's the stars, the, the prime movers, and then there's the flotsam. And for me, that's perfect, man. I don't care about flot. I want more flotsam if that means that you're focusing on the people that matter, both either from an entertainment standpoint or from a like a narrative standpoint. Right. The problem is you never want so much flotsam that they overwhelm the stars. Right. Uh, which clearly does not happen here. <laughs> right. But it doesn't happen here. Um, yeah, like, you I, want I, game changers like, because that's how you get game changers. The beauty is amazing. Like it's such a great thing that happens, and yes, 
and because like of what it sets up the storyline that happens like you know i just i freaking love this episode no it no was- this is no i agree frankly i think this is the best episode of the not just the pre-merge of survivor this is the best episode of the season in my opinion this is such a great episode the merge and- is so good too though yeah, yeah, I think it's probably the merge. The merge is really good. Don't get me wrong. But this, in my opinion, is the best one. To the point where, to skip ahead, the person I'm watching with shot up when Candace and Jonathan stepped off that mat and was like, oh, oh, now I have a rooting interest. Now I got it. And, and I assume even... the rooting interest is against them, right? Yes. <laughs> She's <laughs> all like, yeah, go to the other side. <laughs> she was so oh, happy. Like, bro. before... Yeah. Like, like she had been approaching this like very clinically before, which I had been like, you know, it's like, do, do you care about anyone? Are you rooting for anyone? Like I was really hoping to like see like an emotional connection. This was the episode where it happened. Like, and it, and it was immediate too. And I had even paused it when Jeff was explaining the mutiny. And I was like, do you think anyone mutinies? And she's like thinking about it, thinking about it. And she's like, either Candace steps off or Adam steps off because they want to be together. And then she went, what if they both stepped off? Would that, ha- would that happen? And I was like, <laughs> let's find out. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, we had a similar thing, you know, usually, usually we'll kind of watch them both on the weekend, um, not always in a row, but you know, sometimes like Saturday and Sunday. And in this case, I can't remember why, we had like something going on. So we only had watched that first episode right. where like nothing happens, right? And, and it wasn't until, um, time is fake Monday Tuesday who's you know recently and where we watched the second one but like before that he's like I don't know I don't know about this you know I asked how he's like eh, that's a little boring like it's no China and he really loves China which you know warms my heart but it's just like buzzing <laughs> I was like it's coming it's coming <laughs> yeah and I got a loud like whoa okay still not still not as big of a reaction as the billy moment i think he's still a little shaken up from that but billy moment yeah. also pre-merge like i just don't know yeah. what people want <laughs> yeah and is it maybe like maybe it's a um a result of binging to the point where like if you're used to watching survivor in like three to five day like things then if i i, I just don't know like my my reaction to the season isn't that complicated the mutiny creates the greatest underdog tribe in the history of survivor and i like watching him like i don't know if i've ever cared as much about the result of a team challenge as that exact challenge yes no i completely agree it's it's galvanizing for both the season and i think the players in the season like it motivates everything that happens in it is a great moment and it's a great episode because you don't just get the mutiny, but you get the fallout from the mutiny, which we started to talk about before, but is actually like really interesting and really complicated because you get, you know, Candace gets sent to exile. You know, all she wants to do was be with Adam and Poverty. Guess what? She doesn't get to be with Adam. It's and so Parvati. great. Oh, it's so the great. moment, like, and it's the four of them, like, <laughs> it's just. <laughs> Yeah, they just. I like it's like exactly. you get to send somebody and honestly, he's like, hmm, my one. Yeah, it's so good. I look. Hmm, it's good. Who will it be? <laughs> um, and then, and then who even better is be? you get Jonathan, the person that no one wanted to mutiny over to them, having to ingratiate himself with how Candace there, the person who he thinks is going to be like his social lubricant into yeah. that group, and he is just, oh my god, like he, <laughs> you so can. Bad. He's so bad. He's so like, bad. Oh, this is awkward. And he's like saying too much, which is a classic Wait. Jonathan Penner trope. Yes. He's like, well, you know, it might really wasn't a great <laughs> idea for me to do. She was. You... So so... <laughs> like, I love when he's like, I thought I'd meet everyone here. And like, yeah, sure. That's why you did it. Literally, as we're watching, every time he says anything, uh, the person I'm watching with goes, then why the hell did you step off? Because that doesn't make sense with you betraying your other tribe. If you're all about trust, why'd you betray them? None of this makes sense what you're saying. What are you even talking about? Yeah, like I think he was trying to say like trust and loyalty and like and he's like, and I'm with Candace and she went. But of course then the problem is when Candace does return to the tribe. Parvati's like, I love, I actually do love how Parvati plays this. I think you see a little bit of her, her social acumen there of when she's just like, hey, like, oh my God. Good to see. And then it's just like, so Jonathan says that you two are like really tight. <laughs> and, you know, which allows, you know, Candace could be like, oh yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, cool, great. But like, it's kind of like, I wouldn't say really tight. Really? <laughs> and Parvati's like, 
Oh, thank God. <laughs> Here's the thing also, like, even if it's true, that's not a great argument. Yeah. I came here because I am completely loyal to this one person who's not here at this moment, but like, or would he even say, I wanted to reunite with my fellow whites where my whites at? Like, like <laughs> even just from a loyalty <laughs> perspective, there's other people there be like, who are you loyal to then? I, you know, I need you to be you know, valuable to me, not to this other you know, new interloper. Yep. Um, and he doesn't have anything good to say because there's nothing good to say. It no. was a bad idea and he knows it. He knows it once he did it, but he, he realizes like it very second. quickly. He Sorry? realizes it very quickly. As he's yeah. like talking on that tribe, he is basically realizing I made a huge mistake. No, no, there's it's completely less that it's he's gob, you know. Like I I, mean, yeah. I wonder, so Candace doesn't step off until there's three seconds left. If she he's, steps off at like eight, do you think Penner still goes? I think he certainly has more time to think about it. Cause I don't think right. he goes I don't think he goes until one either way. Well, and, and yeah, what's maybe really those interesting extra, like four seconds would have made yeah. a difference. Like, yeah. do those extra few seconds give him enough time to decide not to do it you know or even say I don't like think so. do you want me to come like <laughs> you know what's and what's here's also- the thing here's the thing i think candace waits that long because she doesn't want him to follow <laughs> Well, I, I, I think there's certainly something to that. I also think there's probably some making sure, like, you go, me, me. Who, yeah, is it me? Is it you? Right. Like she wanted to make sure her people weren't going to go. But for her, like, it's not just about Adam, right? It's about Adam. Right. And it's about. Yeah. yeah. I think she says that. I think it's mostly about Adam, though, unfortunately. Um, oh, 100%. But yeah. You know, What's me. also interesting, though, so she steps off at three and, like, probes says all this like canon's like the amount of time he talks is more than three seconds yo absolutely he's he's gotta draw this moment out um so i know they have offered mutinies before in other or or not before what i'm wondering is they've offered mutinies in other seasons um this is the first one though right yes and then the i believe the rumor is it happened in pearl islands but it didn't air because nobody went right because that's what i was going to say I think yeah. they technically offered it three times on the show. This is the only time anyone mutinies. Yeah, and obviously, it, you know, right? Because I saw what happened. It didn't really oh. work out very well, right? <laughs> right, but 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 even without seeing what happened, the fact is, you analyze it for a second and you just realize, okay, so you do this and you're you completely burn everyone you leave behind. You can never work with them again. Everyone, but then also you're the target for the new tribe because. You know, like the, only if you're like in Candace's position can you avoid being that first boot. And even there, you know, like there's, so, you know, like in some cases maybe not. Um, like it's 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 honestly remarkable that Jonathan did not get voted out that second episode. Yeah. It really is, and I think what's funny too is when Brad is revealed as to be on the jury. Candace is drawing dead. Like Jonathan was already drawing dead. Candace is drawing dead at that point because it's like her best case scenario. I mean, unless she somehow ends up with the I2 and they don't like, but it's like all those four people are voted out and none of them are voting for her. Yep. You know, she's the last person they would vote for. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it it certainly does not look uh, like an appetizing thing for people going forward. Uh, you know, Candace is immediately sent to Exile Island and moreover uh, cast as the villain of the season. Interestingly enough, not cast as a villain in a future season. I can't but... wait to like, because you know, I'll always say like, oh, these are the, and I probably won't say like, oh, and then part becomes like the two, it'll probably be like mm-hmm. fans versus favorites and then I'll reveal that after that. But like, I can't wait to be like, yeah, Candace comes back on Heroes versus Villains. She's yeah. on the Heroes tribe. <laughs> and like, yeah. The show didn't <laughs> intentionally do that. She was supposed no. to be. A yeah, we, yeah, I think uh, most she people herself hates this that note. she was there. But yeah, it's like she is like like it honestly is like she should have been brought back. She will become like a featured antagonist from this point on. Um, and she, yeah, you know, honestly, she's been fairly like until that moment. Um, she's been a fairly impressive player. I liked yeah. you know early in the ep- or like really early when she came back from her first trip and she was like playing dumb about like oh yeah. that's why they sent me there she knew damn well that's why they sent her there but like like she's shown like I a canniness about the youngest. way <laughs> yeah 
Uh, you know, she seems very smart. Uh, you know, she's beasted at challenges, but she just got really wrapped up in a douchey bro like it's happened to two smart ladies before i'm sure uh biology is just such a powerful thing because it, it yeah just it makes just me so she was in such a good position she was even if she didn't like jonathan telling her that it was true she was not going to go anywhere but she just missed him so bad that well, is and here's the thing. Had she not mutinied, just breaks my heart had she not mutinied she still could have gone back to them at the merge she right. wasn't going home. She was, you know, she, she was fine. She could have, she could have jumped ship later. And then it's not as public, and it's like not as big a betrayal. Like it's just, yeah. Yeah, I mean, she could have even let them like get rid of, you know, the sort of spare raro people, and mm -hmm. like then flip, and then that's just kind of seen as like playing the game, you know, right, exactly. <laughs> Stuff and like that. I, is, I wonder if she thinks in that moment, like, well, if I don't flip here, Adam's gonna think I didn't really want to be with, you know, because I, I, I couldn't know what wait thinking. like a week. No, no, I mean, she was not thinking with what was up here. Like, there's just there's no <laughs> way. It's a terrible strategic move. And oh, yeah. like I think the term you're looking for is dickmatized. <laughs> basically, yeah. I was like, I, I'm like, is it too hard to say that she's thinking about what's not between her legs? Like, I mean, it's just. That's what's going on. If it was a dude, that's 100% what you're thinking because there's no like strategic value. She was in the controlling majority and the higher majority within that majority. Yep. They would have had to lose like four challenges for her to be in danger on that tribe. Right. Uh, and if that happens, then Adam's tall, never in trouble. But he just looks like such a douchebag. I can't yeah, get over it. Pinched fucking eyes. And Paul the... is powerful. I understand that. And I'm sorry to tell you guys, but it's, he's just. Yeah, it's, we've come to terms with this for qu quite a while. His Don't face. worry. Yeah, I hate. Yeah. Whereas I honestly, like, I, it's a dumb move for That's Jonathan, it. and he, yeah, he knows it instantly. I feel like he knows it when he's on the sit-out bench, and yes. you know, Ozzy tells them that yeah, they're the first people to die. Um, but <laughs> he oh, wasn't Ozzie. really in that great a position anyway. Like he is floundering. Right. They were already <laughs> talking about you know when they want to turn on him. So mm -hmm. he, yeah, because. You know. I mean, I love Jonathan Penner. He will only get better with time. He is just fantastic television. But the dude sends out vibes. And I, I, yes. I, and I you know, yes. So much of it is on him because it has happened in, you know, every season he's played. Um, <laughs> I think it's heightened this season, both because I think he's probably a more aggressive person. You know, life hasn't started to slow him down as much. He's probably, you know, dripping with ambition. But I also think he's just such a poor match for the vibe of this cast. Yes. yes. The older people, a lot of them were taken out early. The other, like, older person that was around, he was around, Cowboy, he's never going to vibe with that type. Nope. Um, and then it's just dude. a bunch yeah. of young people. And I think they just, they're like, why you gotta be like this? Like we're just yeah. trying to have a good time and let the, like our there's... popularity di dictate what happens here. And he's like talking about like plans and like we don't want to plan. Like Nate said it himself in these episodes. You start showing up and acting like too much of a leader in this tribe. We hate that. And again, like that's why you're stupid. That's why you're to... not a good tribe. Yeah, I love um... how he says it too. That it's not like you know, oh, bossing, but he's just like we don't want if you start to lead, we don't like that. Like... <laughs> But yeah, I, I remember hearing um, on some sort of interview on our half or something, Candace talking about it and how like, you know, now she, you know, gets along with Jonathan and, and stuff, but how at the time, um, you know, a lot of it, I mean, yeah, it's like them being young, but also that, and like, this is obviously really sad now, but that he would talk about his wife and his family so much and how much yeah. he like really loved them. And they just couldn't relate because they were all like young single people. So it was like, it was like weird and off-putting to them. It's like, okay, chill. Yeah. <laughs> He's the now, guy it's like club, now they all don't get want it. him there, you know? Right. Yeah. So, so, but this actually also brings up another bit of foreshadowing that I've also really enjoyed in these episodes, which is the one person who doesn't say this about Jonathan Penner is Yule. And every time Yule talks about him, he's like, well, other people think this, which has me thinking that maybe there's something to it, but I don't see it because like, Yule is someone who like like basically I don't know whether it's the vibe that like he's just you know like he's vibing more with him or it's just whatever it is because Yule's not a family man at this point either you know no, no. But there's yeah, a that won't there. happen until Brad goes to a watch party exactly <laughs> well yeah Yule is more mature 
this yes. isn't a very mature season, I think, in part because, for one, yeah, some of those people went early or were marginalized early, you know, both, you know, like Seku and uh, Christina, Cowboy. Mm -hmm. um, but also because, well, you know, Survivor is like, we don't have any non white applicants, so we have to go find people. And they went out and found a lot of young people. Like, right. yeah. And so, and I think that's also probably what leads to uh, why Penner is so off putting to a lot of them is um he's maybe a little more in tune to how much of a game this is I, I, he, yes. i'm pretty confident he was a recruit too but when he you know maybe he knew about it probably maybe even through like tv he's, type he's, stuff. Yeah, he's, he's like okay well this is how we gotta TV. play yeah. and they're not all thinking that way you know no. there the, there's like a vibe to a lot of and not just like the railroad tribe um but a lot of it is like very early survivor and like let's just like like let's just vibe yeah they wouldn't say that because it's like 13 years ago but that's kind of <laughs> yeah i mean flick i did literally say she was here to make friends yes this is true this is true um the year of our lord 2006 was the person you were watching with crush to see uh flick it go no i think he got no i think oh he you're got talking about her that. No, yeah yeah yeah, he, yeah. I think he got over that one, but was he was definitely confused, like he just didn't understand strategy wise, because he's very into like, shouldn't you just throw out the thread at every given moment? <laughs> just like No, honestly, the person I was watching with was also confused by that vote because uh, she thought that it's like people don't trust Jonathan, just vote Jonathan out. <laughs> so, yeah. Was well like, that he was like I don't know, like, you know, when he's guessing, he's like, oh, I didn't feel like Candace and Becky were really, like, buying into the Jonathan thing, so I think he maybe thought it might be Ozzy, so he was just, mm. like, just, he was just, like, what's, what's Flicka gonna do, and I was, like, not vote with you. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like, she'll be, you know, you'll, you'll merge, and she'll be, like, these people are chill, like, like yeah. I think he got very excited in Panama learning, like, what a goat is, <laughs> like, mm. that's a goat, you can bring that, and I'm, like, that is a long way to bring a goat to the end yeah we didn't talk about this because things were moving but it was the was it the right choice to vote out flicka yeah of course yeah of course. <laughs> for the things are good you can't play with somebody that erratic like you know you might not trust jonathan but honestly jonathan isn't that hard to predict maybe yule was able to make this argument jonathan is self-interest and he will do what's in his self-interest you can trust him to do that yeah. in fact part but of the problem isn't playing with jonathan... on that wavelength so you don't know what she's going to do Part of the problem, you know, with with Penner as a player is that he assumes everyone else is working in their self interest, which is not true. But you know it's true of him, so you can. Right. He's tell what very he's gonna obvious do. about it. So. And then you know, Ozzy, it's like, yeah, he's definitely a big threat at the merge, but they figure, you know, that maybe he'll lose eventually. Also, they, you know, he still provides value for them in the pre merge mm -hmm. time. Right, because also, like, if you merge at 12, which is, like, when they're thinking about it, there's a lot of time to lose a challenge before the end there. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's also shields. We'll see how it goes, but, yeah, exactly, yeah, and also if you're, you're you, it's like, well, everyone's going to be looking at, at Ozzy. So. Right. So, um... So we talked about, like, how bad it was for those two to create this super tribe of eight of Raros. Right. Well, let's talk about the real part of it. The I24. I fucking love them so much. Yes. Ozzy is a full 25% of this, and it still might be my favorite alliance of all time. Yeah. I know it's not I mean, yours. Yeah, you know no one can top Black, but Black Widow Brigade for me, but I do love the I24, and they are probably second place. Yeah, it's They rule. Like... And I don't know, like it's maybe we need to like reserve these thoughts because it's gonna be a long season, but I'll just say it every week. Like, this is why I love Cook Islands. It's really yes. not that complicated. Four likable underdogs take down a bunch of assholes. Simple. I, I don't know why people need more than that, why they have to delve into their spreadsheets of wow, this pre-merge boot wasn't interesting enough, and uh, uh Yule is too calculated. It's like it's like it's not exactly like this is a storyline that is repeated yep. frequently on this show. The show, it generally rewards bad behavior. Uh, this is a show where it is a tried and true strategy that we have mm -hmm. to take out this person because they're too nice. This yep. is a season that it doesn't happen and it's just fucking joyful. And it starts right away from the very first challenge, oh, which yeah. merges into a reward where they all get to bond over their shared humanity and families. Like talk about gilding the lily. 
Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing. Well, you get like, to see little baby Ozzy pictures. Baby Ozzy <laughs> pictures. You know, they also, get like, I all definitely dorky that song ahead. Dorky, like, that was great. Like, that why was don't they do funny. that more? Give me more, like, childhood and teenage photos of the castaways because that is delightful. Also, I uh, consistently forget that Sandra has uh, children. So I guess she's yeah, that, that I, kind I didn't of didn't remember until not the only one. Oops, sorry. I'm pretty sure I or in an earlier episode that Penner was the only um, parent, and that is not true. But and well, nobody called you out on that. Like, I don't think anybody else remembered either. It had she's not still like 13 years younger than him anyway. So this is the beginning of Sandra's oh, like you know development as a character of the season. She really hadn't had much before that. Um, yeah, and it, because we instantly like them, because the mutiny is viewed as such a treacherous act, both like, even though like you think like 13 seasons in, we might be beyond that kind of morality type stuff. No, we're not. In part because yeah. we know she's going over to this douche and it's like just such a like cool kids table type deal. Um, but also, yeah, they're just, they're, they're so likable. And then every challenge from here to the merge carry so much weight like I, I would pain yes. me to lose any of these four people both because i love them as a unit but also they lose once it's over it, that's it yes. there's no maneuvering for them and in fact they're still like well you know, you're watching this for the first time you're like i still don't see how it goes like is there going to be enough votes is there going yep. to be enough episodes before the merge mm -hmm. the answer to the second question is no the answer to the first question is yes um <laughs> So that's, it's, and then people will keep, well, oh, I don't care that they got rid of Rebecca. You're focusing on the wrong part. It was the part of the episode up until that, when it's like, is one of the iTunes going to go? Is one of the iTunes going to go? Is one of the iTunes? Oh, they don't. Okay, cool. And then yeah. I don't, yeah, I also don't care who goes. That wasn't the peak of the episode. It's not always about the final result. No, I mean, I completely agree with you in, in everything, you know, for the iTunes to succeed, you're going to have to lose people off the other tribe. And if you want them to succeed, you don't really care who goes <laughs> and how much you know about them. And honestly, the people they do choose to vote out uh, just makes Rara look worse and worse. Yes. Which makes yep. me, uh, which it makes does. It makes does. the underdog story uh, that much more satisfying. No, does it become a little more complicated if they like, hey, you know what? We don't need Adam and Car uh, Candace here. No, the, the divisions remain pure. Yes. And yeah, I mean, and yes. well, I mean, uh, it's just, yeah, that's where the intenseness, and that's where the excitement is. And, it, you know, it carries right to the merge episode. So yeah. it starts here and, you know, just rewatching it this time. It's just as powerful. Well, one thing, not just as powerful. That the first time, like, oh my god, how is this going to work out? But, like, yeah, just the visual of it eight yes. versus four. How is this going to be? And then that, those, you know, and it's not like it's like a mighty four either. Like, obviously, Ozzy has already started to prove an amazing uh, performer. Yule right. is Yule, but yeah, it's not like, yeah, you'd still think like that other tribe, there's going to be, there's think something's going to come up to ruin this, and they keep on winning. Right. It so, is so funny actually, too because the last season we watched before this was Palau. It's like so right after the mutiny happened, and then they're like, "It's a challenge." She's like, "How is this gonna work?" And I'm like, "Like it did for Palau. Palau. They just said, <laughs> you you saw you saw a tribe go down to one person, man." Yeah, I love <laughs> that. Raro used their like four best competitors in that reward challenge. I, that's what I was going to bring up. That was such a huge They're dumb mistake. is what I was saying before. No, it was such a huge mistake. And I was going to bring that up where they, they, and, and I, For and I'm telling you, no, and that's exactly it. They basically like, they got talked into, there's no way we can lose. Let's win this reward. We really care about that. They didn't care about losing the uh, immunity challenge. Like they wanted to win that reward more than they wanted the immunity, in my opinion. They were probably like, oh, we'll just vote out Jonathan, and then they didn't. <laughs> yeah, so we should talk about that decision, actually. Um, why the hell did they not do that? I actually think Adam made a pretty astute observation for Adam level. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, it ended up being 100% wrong, but that's a lot of that is due to Adam's own later actions. But at that yes. moment, the idea that Jonathan can't go anywhere, he has betrayed these people, Brad could. You know, Hearing that really... though was the funniest shit. <laughs> it's so great with future knowledge, but like the, the There's so many great process, moments. not results, I think he's right. I think that's the right call. 
I've heard people say this is like not even just like the pre-merge thing, but like, oh, this one's just not that good of a on a rewatch, which is first of all, just not really how I like to judge season because that's not what this show is designed to be. But it's also wrong. this is great on a rewatch because there are so many moments of dramatic oh. irony, especially yes. in the mutiny episode. It's fantastic. Yeah, but here's the thing. Even though he has Adam... nowhere else to go. Right. Even though Adam's thought process there makes sense it makes sense for adam there's other Mm -hmm. people on that tribe and this is what i was talking about how you were saying like nate is the uh, the mastermind of the tribe adam's the one that's making the decisions on this tribe or i just mean like nate has has poverty and and nate he has a four-person block right there adam's making the calls here which is going back to your point this is a dumbass tribe highlighted by when uh you know he finds out that jonathan was talking some st- stuff about him just total fucking bro like he's gonna meet him in the parking lot type oh shit God. he it's sent just... me to exile yeah he is so... just the perfect villain you know he's, this is so no, no, i agree he's, he's great in that role and the thing is candace definitely brings that up be and like mm-hmm. what i'm thinking this like he's like but more like she's thinking like, is there any way I can get the vote back on Jonathan? <laughs> yeah, and honestly, she probably has enough intel from like um, Yul and Becky that she's probably like, they have literally never mentioned Jenny and Brad. Like this is not a problem. I mean, maybe they had, we don't really know. Maybe, but... oh, I'm choosing to believe they don't. Yeah. Just, yeah. They were such like a pair, you know, before. And it's just, it's funny, like they, they only put that on they're never like oh maybe nate can pull in sundra or like oh rebecca and sundra were friends maybe we're worried about that it's like only uh you know right only because rebecca and sundra were friends they were but you never hear about that it's only that nope. jenny's gonna go back to the asians or brad's gonna go back to i think they were at probably least more brad they say brad becky and Jenny. yule sorry what? i think yeah I, th- I think they were more worried about brad too because jenny does seem to fit in very no, well. but they say it the a couple episodes. No, ago, they do. Yes. When she's the decoy boot, they bring it up about Jenny. Yes, yes. Uh, but then only Brad votes for her amongst that yeah. group. Um, Which should have probably been proof enough that they're not. Well, it's also proof that they're not together, line. and that um, you know, that Brad was an outsider before he chose to not go swimming. Uh, right. that they well, didn't even like flip him in. Or, Actually, no, we're just going to vote out Christina, Brad. Like they continue to let him think that unless it was like, yes, I finally get the voter out. Um, some behind the scenes from like interview type stuff i talked about this in the first episode another reason why or at least they've said why they didn't go after jonathan is they were concerned about the idol sure um and why let him choose who gets to go so that that that's fine you tell him you tell him the boots brad and then he votes for brad and you vote for him right right but i I seem like a simple solution sure but But they didn't hear how would they ever come up with minority vote uh, t- carrying they weren't there for the most influential moment in the history of the show no we're uh, saying that's not even that's not even you don't even need a planned voodoo situation you don't need to split the vote if jonathan it's not like in that case cowboy was like worried about both candace and jonathan and eliminating his second choice their second choice is someone they can get jonathan to vote for yeah, you, don't yeah, need you didn't to really need to vote. like quite qualify that remark it was not uh, you, you could have just ignored me. Uh, yeah, as, uh, That's know, what I do. do. Uh, no, I, I, I think, ignore everything. It didn't even make sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you ignore it. Um, um, no, I don't think it was just that they were afraid of bounce back from the idol. I think Adam wanted to align, like keep Jonathan around, if in case the idol would prove useful. Yeah. It's he what was- I've heard them say in interviews post facto and all that i've also i think i recall brad saying it's like oh yeah i was gonna flip back so (laughs) (laughs) so here's the thing you know well this is the other thing about it it's very fitting and i think very kind of amusing in the same way that you know we talk about kind of like the white people being the you know now the villains of this season that they do the classic white person thing which is they project onto someone else what they would do which is they project onto jenny and brad 
because again, the, you know, like the original Asian five, you know, there's four people left of that original five, just like there's four white people left. And they project like, oh, well, they're going to align with each other just like we choose to. Yeah. They also do a classic white person thing is like, well, I don't really trust or like this guy, but there's just something about him that I can tolerate that I just don't know what it is. So I'm going to uh-huh. give him my, you know, in this case, not give him my vote, but, you know, give the vote of, oh, well, I think I'll just yeah. feel a little more comfortable. Give the benefit of the doubt. Benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And it's because of this other thing, though, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally the other thing. He didn't swim. He didn't swim. That's why I voted for him. <laughs> uh, hey, so, so we uh, talked about how it was a disaster for Candace and Jonathan to flip. Like, why? Brad probably should have, right? Like, Brad, Brad should have mutinied. <laughs> Yeah, apparently. Who knew? I mean, that honestly, so I, I can't really accept the counter argument. He, the, he, it couldn't have gone worse for him. So yes, a hundred percent. Like scoreboard tells us, he should have mutinied because you know he probably would have won immunity that vote. He's, when you're voted out two days later, I don't think you could be like, no, 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 that was totally the right decision. I get why he didn't. There's not a lot right. of time, and also when you're standing there, it's like there's eight of us and four of them. That doesn't. I can't predict that they'll make this work. But no, nope, no, nope, you should have gone over. They didn't like you anyway. They didn't respect your uh, creative spatialism. That's right. I, I, I think uh, Yule would have let him do the puzzle. <laughs> I mean, I think there'd be room. It's not like, hey, Ozzy, uh, I got this. Yeah, it's like, what, are you crazy? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, that was poor decision, uh, perhaps. Or non-decision, I don't know. Anyway, I'm he's on the jury. Going, perhaps, he was voted out right away, so, you know. Yeah, but he's on the jury. That's what he really wanted. Uh, we get the rare pre-merged jury. Don't see that too often. I think this yeah. is the first, right? I think so. I think so. Yeah. What There's do you guys think of there? the pre-merged jury? Do you, just the I general concept of it? General concept, I don't like it. I don't think it's as big of a deal in Heroes versus Villains because they at least kind of like know each other and know the game better. Uh, but in this, it's like when, you know, when it's a final, now what's funny is like, Pretty sure Brett, or at least either Brett or Jenny, one of them does vote Ozzy, which is funny. But like it's the it's same. Jenny. It's Jenny. Jenny, yeah. But it's the same, you know, issue as like Edge of Extinction, where, you know, the people are in the jury who have never met someone in the final mm-hmm. two or three. And that's not great. That's my initial take. And, and, you know, I've been there with people. And I don't know if it's just because I like to, you know, find another take about this but i started thinking about it it's like it's actually the way juries are supposed to operate that they don't know the people that they're judging um so uh, now that's yeah, just well, the word the jury is and they this know, isn't quite that but they know the thing. are we overvaluing how much the merge boot knows about somebody you know, or like, how could Brad vote? He didn't even get to be on both tribes. Now, this is a season when people combined in different ways. Like, there was three right. different combinations. So, you know, there's a, a percentage chance they would. But, like, the average person that's booted out at the merge, if that's, you know, when they start the jury, they're not really going to know much about the fight. Like, some, there, there's a high likelihood that they won't really know anything more than somebody who was, you know, didn't make the merge three days earlier. Like, I think yeah. we might overvalue how much intelligence, like, the first couple people in the jury have from past experience anyway, if the people who they end up having to vote for were never on a tribe with them other than the day of a merge feast and uh, let's figure out which from that other side we're going to vote out. Yeah, the fact is, most juries probably rely on what they're told by the people who come to the jury in later votes. You know, they rely on them to sketch in what is happening in between tribal councils, because the fact is, they only see tribal council. And if you only see tribal council, then you're only getting a very small slice of what's happening. Now, in terms of one of the two, uh, one of the three finalists uh, votes, you're seeing what really matters at tribal council. You're seeing pretty much like their entire game. But, um, you know, but the other, you know, but you have to kind of rely on what you're being told to get a fuller picture of, you know, of everyone else. But that's, but you're right. That's true no matter what. Now, I would say the problem with the pre-merged jury is that there's more people that have to rely on that. Um, Now, in this case, they split their vote up a little bit. So I think it kind of offsets, but had the pre-merged jury all voted one way, it, it would have flipped the final result of the season. 
Yeah. But, and then I suppose the way this season works out is like the two people, there's two people that didn't know any of the finalists, like, you know, mm-hmm. and other than as competitors. And it's just, I guess it's like, yeah, that always didn't feel right to me. But as I think about it more, I don't know if it really changes much. Yeah. Like, uh, well, there's not, no, there's I'm trying not to think of like, uh, a, them, um, no. uh, yeah, that's, that's, no, that's, that's wrong. No, but, but, uh, th- yeah, Jenny, oh, Jenny right. Sorry, Jenny yeah. was on a trip with two of them. So I guess it's just Rebecca. Um, and, and yeah, like and, you were saying, you yeah. know, it's normal juries. Um, sorry, something felt weird with my audio. Um, normal juries, it's, it, you know, you're not supposed to know them. And it's like, yeah, that'd be great if all of them didn't know them. But if you have, you know, right. people knowing one of the finalists and not the other is not. Oh, yeah. No, that was just a joke. Uh, just yeah. using the term jury. But no, more, it's more like the first person in a jury probably barely knows one of the finalists if they're not people who happen to be on their first tribe like that three days really isn't that impactful anyway so the idea that like there's somebody on there who didn't have those three days i don't think it's really moving the needle so like we already like the jury in survivor is always filled with people with a sliding scale of exposure no matter what yeah so is it really that big a deal that that exposure like starts with like nothing but tribal council Maybe not, especially when you think like early Survivor, which is still uh, qualifies, the person who has spent the most time with the finalists, the last person to join the jury, usually only bases their vote on who's the fucker that put me here. So yep. like, I don't know if like the extra data actually really matters one way or another. I think it, it, it feels like it's not right, but I think in the end it's like, eh, whatever. Like they all just base their thing on the group think and who you know wronged me or didn't wrong me or yep. which of these people seems most like uh, the way I wanted to play. Like, I just, I don't know if the, the, that imbalance is really that significant. No, I agree. I, I don't think it's a huge deal. Um, I think I'd prefer if it didn't happen. And yeah. recent se- and modern seasons have solved that by just merging earlier. You know, they don't- Unless remember. of course they have the entire cast make the jury. Right, <laughs> uh, right which, yeah, okay. I forgot about that, but yeah, that sucks too. Huh? Yeah, I mean, that sucks <laughs> for other reasons, but even there, I'm like, again, those people, like, they're getting the same level, like not like they're basing their vote on the same petty shit that other. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And yeah. both of those had actually spent a bunch of time with a juror. Uh, one of the finalists is just one, and you know, they chose one of them, and they didn't choose the other one. So yep. hey, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go to our recurrent segments. Uh, let's first talk about uh, what our viewing partners think, which, Andy, we're cutting you out of this one because you're watching That's alone, fine. right? Uh, she still enjoys this season. Moving on. Oh, okay. There you go. You're not watching Yeah, alone. I was going to say, wrong. remember him, his viewing partner doesn't remember watching it the first time. That's so. right. Did she, she, did she remember? There were no the Billy mutiny. revelations. I don't know if she remembered that there was a mutiny, but after the mutiny happened, she's like, oh, yeah, this. Okay. Here you go. Okay. <laughs> Um, so Emma, what did your partner think? Yeah, so, um, the meeting was definitely exciting. Um, and then, yeah, it was funny given, given the, um, given how bad, like you were saying, the like eight to four, like how, how, you know, sort of scary that looks and like, oh, if they lose once, it's like, oh, he's like, well, fuck Becky and Yule, I guess, like in terms of he really (laughs) thought they were going to go far and, you know, that, that looks like a problem and we're like, yeah. Yeah, real problem there. People will call um, the season predictable. How is it predictable <laughs> that this guy who was down eight to four had two of his core alliance just fucking betray him <laughs> and he wins? Yep. It's not, yeah, in fact, you're using the term predictable wrong. When Jonathan talks about Candace being like his number one, you know, um, my viewing partner was like, I thought Yule was like <laughs> more, he was closer to Yule. And I was like, <laughs> And I wonder if that'll have any effect on the rest of the game. We'll I see. Um, I would say there, Penner had the foresight of recognizing it's like, even if he wanted Yule as his yeah, number one, not he good. knows he's not Yule's number one. Yeah. So he needs to yeah. find somebody who might. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we also got our first fucking white people comment of the season, which weirdly wasn't the mutiny itself. And yeah, for context, unlike this panel, my viewing partner is Latino. So he, his comes from a real place and not us just being like, <laughs> those terrible white people, right? 
says the other white people. Um, but yeah, it was actually not the mutiny itself, but when Adam and Jonathan are sort of talking and plotting and and again with the like, oh, getting all four of us to the final four. And it's just like, uh, like, especially when it seems like Nate and Adam are like this group. Now, we don't know what Adam's plans necessarily were gonna be, but uh, we will see what Rara will turn out to do. So <laughs> that'll be interesting. Um, yeah, I still like special feature showing production at this point. Like, oh god, oh god, it's happening, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> like, what can we do? Can we make it a what if we how many people there? If we make Brad be on the jury, then do we have a number where we can make it a final three? <laughs> and then I don't I think don't... that's conspiracy theory. Yeah. I legit think that's what's yeah. happening. It's like then we at least get Huel in there and then uh what twist can we throw in? Mm -hmm. Um yeah, so that'll be fun next week. <laughs> Yeah. um and then yeah so he still likes you um becky you know he just sees it's kind of there hanging around there um he, he thinks nate is very extra he was described as mm. um being extra and like has you know what i should look at the actual notes i made but um you know, it's become increasingly clear that any poverty opinion besides her physical appearance is because he's, he says just heard her name a lot. And I'm like, yep, by me. <laughs> like, right. he acts, he acts like it's like in the ether. And it's just like, no, it's, it's, it's from me. Um, it's probably not the message boards or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. I don't, he says, yeah, yeah, I don't he, think he's going to our comments. Right. He likes Yule because his personality he doesn't like Becky or Candace because he thinks they're writing coattails. This was after the first episode. Now, obviously, he hates Candace and Jonathan. Right. Um, oh, yeah. And this is this is before the mutiny. He's like, I feel like I like Raro better as like a tribe, but there's no one there I like. Like, I think he just likes their like chill vibes, mm. you know, okay. but that's before interesting. The mutiny. Interesting. And then Folks caused um, it a task on this, but I think Candace was actually being truthful. Yes, I think that's why 100%. she mutinied, was that she just oh. wanted to hang with them. It seemed oh, yeah, more 100%. fun. Yeah. yeah. I like um, that he called then, her out on it. But, uh, and then she's like, no, that's not all totally it. It's totally it. But yeah, but the, the exact poverty thought was like, he likes poverty because she never seems at the bottom, but isn't leading the charge. And that leads to longevity in the game. But then it says, but I think I'm influenced by having heard her name so much that she either must be crazy or must be really good at the game. And, and I so think you can tell at this point that she's not crazy. So right, but like, so it's really funny because I'm sure he's like going to expect some like move or some moment yeah. from her this season, and I'm like, no, it's they not just gonna, bring no, her back because no, Candace said school. Like, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, and and interestingly, you know, really not a not a ton of thoughts on Ozzy, despite him being, um, you know, challenge beast and stuff. But he just, I don't think you know, cares that much about the challenges of it all like he never like when we watched panama he never vibed with terry um so it's just well, not yeah. yeah it's easy to not yeah some that's... people do though you know oh, that's... Surely, that's... surely absolutely i mean he did like tom he's not a must right he didn't like ian which was hard for um 15 year old emily to handle um, so, so my viewing partner, um, I didn't make as copious notes as usual, but what was funny was after well, because I watched on Saturday. I'm like, I'm not going to, well, no. So we watched our first episode. We watched the first episode on Saturday or Sunday, and then we didn't watch the second one until last night. Mm -hmm. But after the first one, they have the preview for the next one. And they say, and something shocking, it's like a choice is offered. It's going to be shocking. And she goes, oh, are they going to offer to let them switch tribes? And I had to like freeze my face. I was like, we will find out. What an interesting thought. <laughs> um, and then I think when it when the offer was extended, she didn't remember predicting it. So <laughs> <laughs> incredible. Um, but no, a, a, as I was saying earlier, the mutiny like com I think completely changed the way she's watching the season. She was like kind of very clinical, like trying to like analyze, feel out. This is her first season as Survivor. She didn't really know what to expect. She didn't really know like what she should be watching for, like what she should be rooting for. I think this kind of jolted the emotion. And now she's like all in on rooting for these four underdogs. 
and I think she and I think she liked Yul and Ozzy both beforehand, actually. Um, you know, she, you know, we we joke, it's like, well, they're gonna have a shot because Ozzy's like swimming, you know, and it's like, yeah, they got a shot because Ozzy's swimming. Yeah. Um, and uh I mean, like and, and she like, I mean, and I think she has generally liked the way like Yule has played. Um, but it also kind of and she's been saying for weeks, like people like it's like you know why isn't it Jonathan why isn't it Jonathan I don't think she even dislikes him though she doesn't like him but she's like clearly everyone else dislikes him <laughs> so and I believe as the edgers would say he's a OTTN mm, yes um I think don't tell me no one tried to explain we it. don't actually care I um, don't want to know but yeah and then like yeah and, and like I think she had she, she found like Candace and Adam stuff like a little over the top before, but this definitely kind of galvanized like the real like emotion against and them. And it'll only get worse. Right. And and that's the thing that it would, would have been lacking was like, I don't think she had had made that emotional connection yet. This episode made it. So she is very much on board. So yeah, we're, we're a few seasons in at this point, we, you know, right. watched a bunch between Pearl Islands and, and Cook Island. So it's been interesting kind of seeing like him start to learn yeah. patterns and certain things to develop and, you know, what, what characters he'll end up liking and whatnot. He is team three, everyone. So it's going to be okay. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, yeah. And then we also like to kind of check in on some thoughts on the returning players. Um, Andy, you haven't been around. Uh, any thoughts on our many, many returning players thus far in the season? So I predicted this in the first episode, and it's held really true, especially uh, in these two. I just fucking love watching Ozzy compete. Like in challenges, it's just it's really like, and again, It's because that's the fresher uh, content for me because it doesn't, you know, Obviously, like I know he's good at it, but you just see him like do stuff and the way he just fucking crushes people like it's it's so far apart that it's just like, oh, look at that. Look at the fish man go. And it's it's just it's it's so legit impressive and frankly relaxing because eventually, you know, the the season will go to the part where like, well, no, I don't want him to beat Yule because Yule is my fave. Still is. I don't, I don't, I'm not worried about that happening. I think I know how it's going to go. Um, so just like watching him do stuff like in challenges, like, you know, the way he like lifts his leg up when going down, like just the way he'll, th- he'll throw it ahead of him and then swim. It's just, it's, it's so impressive. But he shows up at camp. It's like, I caught a bird. Yeah. Yes. It's just, it's just, <laughs> it's just and it all so like awesome. is crystallized <laughs> in the moment when like the I two four not like the, and the, now that he is actually an essential part of their group as opposed to the guy they kept talking about like when are we gonna get rid of him we'll use him for a bit we gotta get rid of him and now he's all like yes us that's us four but then when he, yeah he's like mutineers are the first person people. to die um, people, which as Emma and I have discussed out. offline because of the line but it's yeah such yeah a, the the copy editors here are like god damn it could have been cleaner yeah yeah one one too many uh you know syllables in the stanza there uh, or two syllables really um <laughs> yeah. but it's such a crystallization of like the lost boy aesthetic of ozzy like that like you know you can just picture him that like he was he's been reading pirate novels in his like jungle adventure quest of a lifetime and it's just, just like I, I again the first time i watched it i i was off on i was out on ozzy when he was bullying billy um, and then, you know, in seasons after this, uh, he's only really enjoyable when he gets shown the door. Mm-hmm. Uh, less so in Game Changers. Actually, Game Changers, he was fine because he wasn't the most boring people. consistently forget that Ozzy is on Game Changers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> when does he get voted out? I don't know. Merge. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but he, I like the here, or Sen Haley again. He's when I like him when I, when I started to like him in that moment because he becomes in this group of four. But I find like I just I like watching him do stuff. It's just yeah. it's, it's it's like watching highlights of somebody who can you know like we'll share hockey. Well, maybe it was just Brad and I. We share hockey highlights. I don't even watch that's hockey, but it's like that thing was cool. I saw somebody do something cool, I don't and that's what I feel like watching Ozzy this season is like. Hey, that's a cool thing. And so yeah, I and I'm really enjoying just like the the 
Ozzy doing a challenge moments or yeah. Ozzy climbing a tree or catching a bird. Just the parts of Survivor I don't normally care that much about I'm finding are actually kind of rewarding this time around. Yeah, and so there is one actually put part of that bird scene I want to bring up because as we're watching it, he shows up with the bird and the person I'm watching with goes, uh, like he, and then it's like, oh, what should we do with it? And they decide like, okay, like we're going to eat it and all that. He hands it to Yule and then Yule like goes off camera and she goes, wait, so Yule is just like the designated bird killer? Like, what did Yule do? And it's like, yeah, I think Yule killed the bird. <laughs> Ozzy caught it. Yule killed it. <laughs> well, they had chickens earlier. So, you know, yeah. presumably no, no, they... he had killed them before. So it's like, all right, though, I got this. Though, did Yule have a chicken earlier? Because I thought Jonathan stole it. Yeah, but they went out and caught some. Remember? <laughs> they yeah, like, like, like set up a trap I'm... and got, because there's wild chickens around. No, I know. I'm just, I'm messing around with that. You guys are both just doing so well with your jokes tonight. I, I agree. Thank you for noticing that. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um. It just his delivery of that just kills me. Like I've been like saying it the past like three days. It's just I got a bird. A bird. <laughs> I got a bird. This is so dead. Like and like we don't get it on camera because he like found it when he was like going to the bathroom. But I just like imagine that it's just like huh. well. The thing I, I like about now. it is he has this like little like grin on his face as he says it like caught a bird and he's like hmm. and it's like yep that's me like my kind of charmed life I just <laughs> caught <laughs> a bird <laughs> yeah. and so like, a bird climbed a tree. <laughs> the reason why obviously Ozzy is most likable here is because he's teamed up with the likable people, the underdog yeah. story, the whole deal. Um, and then you know later seasons you know he now gets to live off the le legend of Ozzy and you know his arrogance only grows arrogance that was from the beginning the, yes. the kid who decided that in order for us to be successful we must lose um, but I think it also just really works this season because all he has to do now due to just the you know due to the mutiny due to the, the way the numbers are is just win baby like he doesn't yeah. really have to do anything else there's really no other maneuver to be done especially because he lacks the tool and needed to get that one last maneuver so it's really just get out there and win and that's where Ozzy is that's what he can do that's that yeah. that is his survivor skill the mutiny uh, sorry I was starting to say mutiny or something that shifted and so it sounded really weird the mutiny is the best thing that's ever happened to Ozzy Oh, yeah. At least in terms of Survivor, maybe ever. Um, yeah, at least until only... the creation of OnlyFans, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've danced around it so much. Um, <laughs> but because not only, you know, was he clearly at the bottom of that tribe um, yep. after Flicka, but it also, you know, this really boosts his likability because a, he's, you know, a, a crucial cog in the I-24, but, and, you know, he can really let his, like, challenge beast fly, but it also, like, fires him up, and he's the one, like, Yule is too, like, calm to be, like, yelling at the media, yep. but you, you want that. You want, yes. as a TV yes. viewer, you need that. You need as much as you wish he had just cut out the word people. You do need him telling <laughs> of the mutineers are the first to die. You yep. need, you want that guy hamming it up before they send Candace to Exile Island. It is, it is so, you know, visceral and like important to that experience of being like, you know, he's, mad and he wasn't even betrayed the same way that you yeah, know Becky really and Sutro were know. he didn't you know he didn't like him he wasn't working with him like that's a legit betrayal for yeah. Yule and for the others and but the way Ozzy's able to you know really ham it up and and stuff it's just that gets him on Survivor forever yep. yeah totally and possibly on OnlyFans later um <laughs> Possibly. So yeah, if it, it is the best thing that ever happened to Ozzy, you would have just been, you know, hey, remember that guy who climbed trees in the pre-merch boot? Or, you know, given that it was this season, edited it out of the story altogether so we can yeah. focus on, you know, <laughs> uh, the person who went farther in the game or something. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, no, I, I, and, you know, it's the people are watching along, you know, the people in comments, you know, all six or seven of you, uh, it's okay to like Ozzy this season. Just, just, yeah. just live in it. Enjoy it. You, you know, you don't have to become an Ozzy fan. You don't have to become a subscriber. But in this rewatch, I, I, I promise you, like, just appreciate the things he can do. It's, it's fun. It's exciting. And it's for If you want to become a subscriber, that is your business, too. We do oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, no judge. <laughs> no judgments here. 
Um, I feel like we've talked a lot about uh, Candice and uh, Penner. Um, any thoughts on the other two returnees that we haven't talked too much about? Yeah, I mean, Parvati, you know, is not in this one that much. I think no. I highlighted kind of her best moment in that it's like her most interesting, but also kind of indicates, you know, you know, her gameplay, it's social play with Candace and like getting the info out before like kind of spilling the beans of like, you know, hey, if you're with Johnson, we don't actually want him around, you know, it's just kind of yeah. finding out how she feels and stuff about that. And apparently being enough of a present that uh, Candace wants to come back to, even if it's mostly for Adam. Um, Yule, I mean, you know, Yule continues to Yule. Yule. Um, you know, I think this is something that I notice whenever she's on or frequently when she's on that, you know, I think maybe just can't be overstated, but maybe feels like it doesn't need to be stated, but I want to. God damn, is poverty an attractive human being? <laughs> like, I think like some people like really? almost like they don't want to say it like that. She's one of the top guns because it's too obvious or something, but it's, it's stunning. Like she is it's stunning. Like just it's every time like yeah no and all the things that people say of how like you know it's just the magnetism and all of that you get it it's just she is one of the top dogs in the history of the show so i just I figured Weird way to now. phrase it but um, i don't think i've ever heard the attractive people ranked as the top dogs um mount russia I'm what do we want heard that in a different context but that's fine um and but yeah I think there was there was like something I think again when I was like asking like oh how do you feel about this person this person like Parvati is like I like Parvati you know she seems like she's doing good and then but then would be like well I guess Jenny's also under the radar <laughs> like is it I don't think it's just because she's hot but she's like I mean and I'm like hey I mean she's hot don't worry you don't have to yeah. You, yeah, I am not the person you have to be like <laughs> hedging your bets around Parvati being being hot. I am a Parvati stan. Um, she wrote, She also yeah, there was I think one shot, one of the swimming shots or something where it's just like she looks the same now. It's infuriating. She's almost forty. She's got yeah. a toddler. Yep. She, I follow no. her on Instagram. She looks the same. <laughs> it's impressive. Oh man, it's why? Impressive um yeah gotta do more yoga <laughs> i mean this is why every you know other young woman who is cast to be hot just says they're the next poverty uh yep. because why wouldn't you want to be she looks amazing and she's also one of the best players in the history of the show i love yep. her so much I can't okay. wait to make my husband watch micronesia after this season so we can properly appreciate there you go. Um, anything else to talk about? Okay, sounds like no. So, uh, Emma, where can they find us? They can find us at www.purplerockpodcast.com. They should know how to find the podcast because they're listening to it. Um, leave some comments. Discuss stuff. I don't know. You can follow the Twitter at purple rock pod you can follow me at purple rock emma you can follow matt but why would you want to at purple rock matt and you can follow andy at purple rock andy um the shade on matt is only because he doesn't really tweet it's okay i accept it at this point um yeah. andy hit that theme music <laughs>